This video is a follow-up to our analysis of Turing's 2080 and 2080 Ti. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can do so later. For now, here's a quick summary. Turing is the first generation of GPUs in a while that has brought a regression in price to performance rather than an improvement, or at least the 2080 and 2080 Ti have. How does a 2070 fare? For a start, it's the only card from the 2000 series that actually has aftermarket models available at the MSRP, rather than have everything set at the Founders Edition price. Unfortunately, the good news ends there, but in recognition of the pricing, we will use $500 US for our calculations in this video. Let's begin our analysis by comparing the 2070 to the 70s of preceding generations. We will use data from Tech Power Up as it's one of the very few sites that summarize their benchmark results into one chart for each resolution. We use their charts for 1440p and 1600p as it stresses the GPU harder than at 1080p and so is less likely to have a CPU bottleneck. We opted not to use 4K for our comparison as Tech Power Up's first benchmark of this resolution was with the 900 series, so we couldn't go all the way back to the GTX 470 as we have with 1600p. Before Turing, X70s provide, on average, 135.334% more performance per dollar than their preceding 70, if you didn't take price drops into account, and 128.412% if you did. At $500, the 2070 provides 111.11% more performance per dollar than the 1070 did after the 1070's price was dropped to $400 for the Founders Edition. What would the 2070 be like if it followed the historical trend of price-to-performance improvement? The 2070's performance is set in stone. The price, however, is not. Had Turing followed the historical trend of price efficiency, the 2070 would have cost between $410.50 and $432.63, depending on whether you consider historical price drops. This sits midway between the launch MSRP of the 770 and the 1070, However, we have not yet taken VRAM into consideration, so let's do so by examining recent historical trends. At 4 gigabytes, the 970 had double the VRAM of the 2 gigabyte 770. At 8 gigabytes, the 1070 had double the VRAM of the 970. The 2070 has 8 gigabytes, exactly the same capacity as the 1070. What would the 2070 have cost if it had kept up the historical trend of improvement? To find out, let's look up how much GPU memory costs. Sources for VRAM pricing are scarce. We found only two articles on the subject. The first source, Gamers Nexus, cited a DigiTimes report that pegged the cost of an 8 gigabit or 1 gigabyte module at $6.50 before August 2017 and $8.50 after. From this rate, Gamers Nexus projected 8 gigabytes to cost $52 before August 2017 and $68 after. This is the amount of memory that the 1070 and 1080 carried. The second source, a German outlet named 3D Center, cited a May 2017 listing from electronics retailer DigiKey that pegged the price of 1 gigabyte of GDDR5 memory at 13.41 euros, which was 15 US dollars at the time. However, 3D Center revisited the subject in July 2018 and said graphics cards manufacturers pay only half or even less of the prices at DigiKey. This holds up when we compare their data with Gamers Nexus, as the rate Gamers Nexus cited in 2017 was 43.33% the price cited by 3D Center. We'll use this ratio to estimate the actual price paid using 3D Center's updated data. When 3D Center revisited VRAM pricing in July 2018, they cited DigiKey selling 1 gigabyte of GDDR6 memory for $26.36 for a minimum purchase quantity of 2,000 units. We are looking exclusively at the 14 gigabits per second module used in the entire Turing lineup. Applying the 43.33% discount we calculated earlier, we arrive at an estimated cost of $11.42 per gigabyte of GDDR6 memory. Using $11.42 to judge the 2070 for not improving on VRAM capacity as the 1070 and 970 did, we arrive at $319 to $341 depending on whether you take historical price drops into consideration. 
You might say the move to GDDR6 should mitigate the lack of improvement in capacity, but we'll address this later. Price goes hand in hand with the date of release. What may be acceptable price to performance in a certain year may become outdated and thus poor value in the next. Thus, the price we projected with 70 to 70 trends is only applicable for a release date projected using the same trend. When should the 2070 have launched? From Fermi to Pascal, there have been on average 453.6 days between X70s. If the 2070 had arrived 453.6 days after the 1070, it would have launched on the 6th of September 2017, 405 days before the actual 2070 launch. Some might say this is too soon after the 1080 Ti, just six months to be precise. This brings us to the second method of analysing GPU trends, comparing X70s to preceding 80 Ti's. The 970 arrived 315 days after the 780 Ti launched, and the 1070 launched 375 days after the 980 Ti's release. This comes out to an average of 345 days between an outgoing 80 Ti and the new 70. If the 2070 had arrived 345 days after the 1080 Ti, it would have launched on February 13, 2018, 246 days before the actual 2070 launch. Even if the 2070 was as late as the 1070 and arrived 375 days after the 1080 Ti, it would still have launched on March 15, 2018, 216 days before the actual launch. As it stands, the 2070's launch on October 17, 2018 arrived 591 days after the 1080 Ti, much later than usual. Moving on, how did the new 70s perform compared to the preceding 80 Ti? Compared to the $700 780 Ti, the $330 970 was 1.59% faster at 1080p. 1.64% faster at 1440p and 3.44% faster at 4K. At 4 gigabytes, the 970 also had 133% the VRAM of the 780 Ti's 3 gigabytes. The 1070's 8 gigabytes showed the same proportional increase in VRAM from the 980 Ti's 6 gigabytes, and the performance improvement from Maxwell to Pascal was even bigger. Compared to the $650 980 Ti, the 1070 is 17.19% faster at 1080p, 16.13% faster at 1440p, and 14.75% faster at 4K. The 2070 is 7% slower than the 1080 Ti at 1080p, 10% slower at 1440p, and 12% slower at 4K. As stated earlier, the performance of the 2070 cannot be changed at this point. The price, however, can be subject to change. What would the 2070 have cost if it brought the same improvement in price to performance as the earlier 70s did over their preceding 80 Ti's? The 1070 and 970 brought on average 192% the performance per dollar of their preceding 80 Ti's. If the 2070 did the same, it would be priced between $324.50 and $340 depending on the resolution used to calculate performance. This does not take into account the lack of improvement in VRAM capacity. The 1070 and 970 had 133% the VRAM their preceding 80 Ti's did. The 8GB 2070 has just 73% the VRAM of the 11GB 1080 Ti. Some might say the 2070's GDDR6 makes up for the 3GB efficiency, but that doesn't appear to be the case with games that already push past 8GB at higher settings. Case in point, Hardware Canucks 4K benchmark of Wolfenstein The New Colossus measured the 8GB 2080 delivering less than half the performance of the 1080 Ti, with the minimum frame rate dipping below the crucial 30 frames per second. The reviewer concluded the 8GB frame buffer and lower memory bandwidth caused a severe bottleneck. Though this was the 2080 and not the 2070, they both share the exact same VRAM specifications. This tells us the 2070 will run into a VRAM bottleneck in situations which the 1080 Ti will handle with ease. In our view, if the 2070 could not improve upon the 1080 Ti's VRAM capacity, it should have at least matched its 11GB. 
If we penalize it for the 3 gigabyte deficiency using the $11.42 we estimated earlier for 1 gigabyte of GDDR6, we reach a price of $306. If we penalize the 2070 for not bringing the same 133% VRAM increase over the 1080 Ti, our estimated price drops to $248 to $264. That might seem extremely harsh. But remember that the 2070 is the first 70 that has regressed in performance and VRAM capacity compared to the outgoing flagship. Despite this, NVIDIA is charging a whopping $500 for this, $600 if you count the reference founders edition. What could possibly justify this unprecedented markup? Ray tracing, some might say, is the cause of Turing's unprecedented premium as a means to recoup the cost of research and development. Is ray tracing worth the substantial hike though? We had compiled an extensive analysis using TechSpot's initial benchmark, but the new patch has significantly changed ray tracing performance, thus rendering our data obsolete. This experience tells us that any analysis in this transitional stage will be quickly outdated by frequent updates, and we have hence decided to hold off on judging ray tracing's value until it has matured in performance and visual optimization. To be clear, we will revisit ray tracing once its performance has been finalized. Hopefully, we'll have more ray trace games to analyze then, and the resulting increase in sample size should enable a more extensive examination. For now, this wraps up our 2070 analysis. If you like this video, please share it. There is more content like this in the works, so please like, subscribe, and press the bell button if you haven't already. Do you play Rainbow Six Siege or Dota 2? Check out the other channel for analytical guides for both games. Link is in the description and on the screen. While you're here, feel free to watch our playlist on hardware analysis of CPUs and GPUs. Our four-part de novo analysis where we explore its history, its performance impact and why developers stick with it even after it's cracked. And our three-part analysis of the DRM stronger than de novo, where we explore what it does and compare its success with de novo.